Hey there, how's it going guys? It's Lord Chow 1892 and we're going to be going over how to complete the quest for the Sphinx, how to do it in the best possible manner, and some little tips and tricks I found along the way to help you improve your playtime. Go over some misconceptions and some wrong information out there on the internet so you don't get confused. Now where can you find the Sphinx? The Sphinx is located in the mountain shrine, which is northeast from the border town. Now from the border town, you can just walk the path straight up, up until the ancient battleground, and then just follow the series of caves up until you get the shrine. Now, if you want to wait for the game to take you there, Would it you will. Once you get this escort quest from the elf that you had helped previously, he will take you to the base of the mountain. Once you finish his quest, another quest will ensue right after as long as you accept it. So the next quest is going to be Okar's quest and he's going to need help getting up the mountain into the castle where he needs to perform his sacred duty. Once you finish that quest, the area is open and you can go ahead and explore the cave that is behind the castle in order to make it up the mountain and up to the shrine of the Sphinx. So once you work your way up the mountain up to the shrine of the Sphinx, go ahead and approach the Sphinx. The way she works is she will give you five riddles. You can choose whatever order you want to approach these riddles in. But I recommend you start with the riddle of madness because it is easy to complete and the reward is a port crystal. And then we can double that port crystal getting another quest for the best possible reward. There is two solutions to this riddle. You have to place your most beloved onto the pedestal. So that's any NPC which you have a max relationship with. Or you could just use the easy route and put your main pawn on the pedestal and that will also satisfy the riddle. That's very important. You go back to the chest, grab your item before starting the next riddle. The next riddle is going to be the riddle of conviction. Now this riddle, the Sphinx is going to embrace her inner YouTuber and ask you, do you want this item or double it and give it to the next person? So what we're going to do is she's going to ask you for your most valuable item. You're going to give her your port crystal. Giving her your port crystal is going to cause her to double it, and then that'll satisfy the quest. You then go get it from the chest, and now you have two port crystals. Okay, now that you have two port crystals, we're going to need to use one in order to establish a teleport point here at the top of the shrine in order to get back to the Sphinx, because the next riddles are going to require us to leave and accomplish some tasks. So go ahead, place your port crystal down. Okay, now we're going to go back up now to talk to the Sphinx to, to do the last riddle that can be accomplished in this area, which is going to be the riddle of the eyes. Now for this riddle, all you have to do is retrieve a vial from a chest that's inside the cave that she opens. Now you can't really see it at the beginning when you start the cave because it's behind you on top of a ledge, but just go ahead, double back, climb up the ledge, grab the vial and return to the Sphinx to turn it in to complete your quest. Now, if you explore the cave, you will find another chest with a rotten apple, but this is a wrong item. Do not turn that item in because it'll fail your quest. Okay, your next step is to activate both the Riddle of Wisdom and the Riddle of Rumination at this point. We need both of them active because we're going to need a teleport out of here. And if you don't activate them both, then you're going to either waste an extra fairy stone or you're going to have to double back to get up this mountain again, causing you a lot of wasted time. So remember, activate both the Riddle of Rumination and the Riddle of Wisdom before we leave this area. Now the next one is going to be the Riddle of Wisdom. For this quest, you need to bring in a special pawn that has the name Sphinx Parent, Sphinx Mother, or Sphinx Father. Turning in that pawn will satisfy the quest and then you're all done. Now if you're watching this video because you're stuck on this because you saw an online guide, some of the online guides are saying that you need to make sure that this pawn is made by Capcom, but that is not necessarily true. Now to be able to summon this special pawn, all you have to do is make sure you've already interacted with the Riftstone of Fellowship. If you have, you can then just summon it from any major Riftstone. If not, you can travel here to this location on the map where my cursor is. Now this location is just south from the Secret Arbor. There are more Riftstones of Fellowship, so you can get any one. Just this is the one I chose. There will be a special Riftstone there. Once you go ahead and repair it, then you can summon a pawn directly from it with that special moniker. You are wise indeed. So this is the one I chose, Sphinx Mother. Here is a screenshot of the pawn ID, just in case you guys want to use that specific one to copy this guide exactly. Now, once you have that pawn, we are not returning back to the Sphinx yet. We're going to go ahead and continue with 
the riddle of rumination. Now, this is the only riddle that has a time limit. It has a seven day time limit. So you're going to have to hurry for this riddle. You need to double back to the first place that you have found your first seekers token. If you have forgotten, I recommend you look up this website, use the map genie and just double back all the locations until you find where you found the very first one. Now, in its place is going to be a new token called a finder's token. That's the token we're going to have to turn in to the Sphinx. So now that you have your special pawn and your finder's token, go ahead and use the fairy stone to teleport back to the Sphinx. Or if you don't want to use one, go ahead and double back up the mountain to the Sphinx. Now, this next part is very important. Make sure you turn in the riddle of rumination first, because the reward for this quest is three fairy stones. And this is very valuable. The last quest is the Riddle of Wisdom. For this, all you have to do is get the pawn that you summon with a special name. For mine is the Sphinx Mother. You're going to place it on the pedestal and then talk to the Sphinx. This will complete the quest. Now, you have a choice to make. You can either get the chest now and pick up your poor crystal, but you are going to have to trek a very long time to find the Sphinx again, or do as I did, forgo your chest and instead hop on and climb onto the Sphinx so you can ride it to the next location and save yourself multiple hours of walking. So once she's finished, she's going to end up with this final dialogue. Now, you need to pay close attention to whenever she finishes talking because she's going to immediately leave the area. And you have a very small window to be able to climb onto her in order for her to give you a ride to the next location. Now, this is only five second window, so make sure you prioritize getting on top of the Sphinx in order to ride it to the next location. You do not have enough time to make it to grab the chest and get on top of the Sphinx. The game also auto saves right away, so make sure you get on the Sphinx. Now, you're gonna grab onto it until it levels out. Once it levels out, go ahead and let go of your grab, and then you should just be okay to stand the rest of the way. I'm gonna go ahead and speed up through this footage because it is quite a long ways out. Just stay standing and enjoy the view. Now, if you have found this guide helpful, do me a favor, go ahead, smash that subscribe button, leave me a comment, let me know how it's going on your Sphinx adventure. Now we're gonna be riding this for a while until you see her come up to a cave area. Now I was doing this during the night, so it was a little bit hard to see, but you can wait till it's daytime so you can get better visual clues of where we're going. You can also open your map. It'll pause and let you see the map. Now, once you see this area with the caves, that's your indication that it's time to grab on. So once you see this cave entrance, go ahead, grab on to the Sphinx because it's about to go in an incline straight up. And if you don't grab on, you're going to fall at this location. So this is the Thunderclap Cave. We're almost there to her final destination. So go ahead, grab on. Make sure you have enough stamina. And there we've made it to the Frontier Shrine. Now, just getting to this location counts as another riddle completed. So make sure you keep that in mind. She's going to open another treasure chest for you to go ahead and claim. There is 100,000 gold in there. So go ahead and pick that up. Okay, so your next step is going to be placing down our port crystal. This should be the second port crystal that got duplicated. So go ahead and place it down. So we have somewhere to teleport to because a lot of these quests are going to send us out into the world. Okay, this next portion is 100% optional. Mostly, I actually do not recommend you do this, but I ended up using two fairy stones to go back to the main location to open the last chest that I foregoed so I could grab onto the Sphinx. Now, the last chest contained 1,200 rift crystals. That is a very low amount of rift crystals, and to be honest, in hindsight, it wasn't worth the two fairy stones that I had to spend to be able to go back and forth. I recommend you do not do that. Just go ahead and continue from the location you're at and go ahead and grab your first quest from the Sphinx. Now, I'm going to let you hear the full dialogue for this next portion of a quest because that's going to be your only clue and indication on what quest you're currently doing. Now. Questions beget questions, and I have one for you. 
How many riddles have you solved thus far? My memory fails me, you see. Remind me and make it plain. Let yonder statues be your means. For every question aptly answered, bring one here before me. Okay, so this riddle's pretty straightforward. Just how many total riddles have we solved for the Sphinx? Now, in her first location, we did five riddles. So our base number is five. Then you're gonna add how many more riddles you have done since you have found her again. Now, if you're like me and you got this one for your first one, that means we have done five riddles at our base location, Finding her the second time around counts as one riddle completed, so our total would be six. Now just apply this logic to your playthrough and answer accordingly to how many riddles you have completed in her second encounter plus the five from the original. So if you've already done two quests for her and then you got the counting quest, your total would be seven. Now once you finish this, go ahead and grab your item. It should be the unmaking arrow. Now this is a very special item that allows you to insta-kill any enemy. So vast is this world, and full of life. You are but one of many. Indeed. In the grand scheme, we are as distinct from one another as pebbles on a beach. Yet we do so love to extol our differences. But are these differences so great? If you believe so, this next task should prove exceedingly simple. I seek this man. If men are so distinct, I'm sure you'll find him in a trice. Okay, so this is our third riddle. It is the abduction quest. Basically, all we have to do is go find the NPC and then bring him back to the Sphinx. Now, his location is past the border checkpoint at the rest town, which you do need to progress through the main story in order be to get there easily. But if you have not done that, we can also walk there from the Sphinx location Okay, there's two ways of getting down. You can either go left and down, which is the easy path, or you can follow the road straight up and around, but it's going to be a little bit more difficult. Now, this is the easy path right here from the Sphinx. You're just going to start jumping down these ledges, and you'll be able to skip a large majority of the difficult encounters. Now, if you like the challenge, I recommend you go straight through this broken pillar because there's going to be a chimera you have to fight and two minotaurs. Now... The important thing about the Minotaurs is that whenever I kill these two Minotaurs, they gave me Fairy Stones. Now, to my knowledge, Fairy Stones weren't a part of the loot table for any monster drops, but obviously I couldn't replicate this anymore. I did go back and kill them again. They didn't give me any more Fairy Stones. It could also be a one-time thing, but I am interested to know in the comment section if you guys did this, did you guys also get Fairy Stones? when you kill these minotaurs or was i just extremely lucky and they are part of the loot table so um just let me know really interested to find out for sure okay so once you make it down the path and you make it here to this open uh cave exploration area so to say uh you'll get here regardless of what path you chose the easy or the hard path just follow the steps down uh, because it looks like there's nowhere to go but there is you're just gonna have to parkour down a little bit from the side of the mountain in order to get there Hey, now, I know what you're thinking. You see this waterfall, you think it's going to push you off. It's not, so just go ahead and cross it. Okay, so if you follow it along, you should now be down at the bottom of the mountain. Now, you're just going to follow your map up until you get to the rest point town. But this time, the Let's south see, side, please. where we're going to find our special NPC that we need to teleport back. So once you get there, go ahead, look around, look for the NPC. He'll be wearing this white stuff. So he's right there for me on the screen. Go ahead, you talk to him. His name is Virgil, so keep an eye out for that. And you want to double check his features, make sure he has the scars, make sure that his eye is dead and check his hair because he does have a lookalike. Now, if you use a fairy stone while you're carrying somebody, that person will come with you. But I believe the intended solution for this was to use the vial from the first set of riddles because that vial allows you to put somebody in it and then bring them back with you in your inventory. 
But I like the fairy stones better, so we're going to use those. Head and place them on the pedestal to complete this portion of the riddle quest, and then we're going to get another one. Truly, you're satisfied with your answer. Then I shall weigh its merit. A human from the faceless swarm is no less a challenge than to seek a single grain of sand on the Alta Batal coast. Yet pluck you have, and for that I congratulate you. Okay, another now we're gonna be able to get another quest, so go ahead and pay attention. How easily the mind unravels. Some say it's pain that does it best, others darkness. But I say neither, rather. I say a mind cannot be more soundly broken than when it beholds its earnest efforts laid low in a single stroke. Could you survive such despair? We shall see. Here, I have an amphora destined for Sir Moritz in Batal. Deliver it to him, but beware, it's rather fragile. I do hope your struggle will amuse. Okay, so the Sphinx wants us to transport that vase across the entire desert. Now, some guides will tell you to go ahead and clear that path and then transport the vase, but that's a load of nonsense. We're just going to go abduct the guy and bring him to the vase. So you have two options. You can either go to the rest town, border town, uh, from the south side again and take an ox cart, or you can adventure down on foot like I did until you get to the new city. Once you get to Bakbata, it is very important that you make a new inn rest save, pay the 2000 gil. The first inn is not usable because it will charge you 999. Go to the second inn, pay your money, make a new rest save. Now, if you want an easy fight at the end of the Sphinx quest, go ahead and change to the Archer class at this point so you can use the Unmaking Arrow for your solution. Now, if you want a real fight, go ahead and change to your favorite melee class and go ahead and dismiss your pawns at this point make sure your main pawn doesn't have any abilities that can damage uh, i recommend making him a simple mage with only curative spells so just keep following along follow my path here in the video we're going to go up to the beggar that the sphinx told us about the one that we need to give the vase to but just like as before instead of bringing him the vase we're going to bring the beggar to the sphinx and set him in front of the vase so once you pick him up go ahead and get out from underneath that temple once you're up and clear open airs use your fairy stone and teleport back to the sphinx once you're back at the sphinx shrine you just need to walk up and place him next to the vase a cutscene will trigger and then that'll be the completion of the quest Okay, now it's time for the last quest. Though ours is a battle of wits, tests of metal are more to your strength. Is that not so? Come, try your arm. Though he shall be your opponent, not I. However, I am not one to be amused by a simple duel. Bear this ring into battle, that I might gauge your true strength. Okay, so the ring automatically equips, so you don't gotta do nothing. It just reduces your stats. Now, two options. Option one is, which is the simplest one, is to knock down the guy, and then you gotta eat him off the cliff and make sure he dies. Now, right here, I got too eager, and I didn't throw him well enough, and he did not die, and he despawned. Now, I thought right here he fell off again and then died, but this caused me to fail this part of the quest because it wasn't completed correctly. So be careful with that. All I did was just reload the save and then do it again. But keep that in mind. You have to clear the throw. Make sure he fully dies. Okay, so my second go around, um, the spawns decided to help out, which was unexpected, and they killed him. But it looks like that also counts as a possible solution, so you can brute force your way and make sure he gets killed. So at first I was a little bit um, suspicious because a lot of the guides said that wasn't an option to kill him. So you know, I just I'm leaving this footage in here so you could see that even though it resolved this way without you throwing him off the cliff, you open the chest and you still get your reward. Now I am gonna show you the proper way of doing it because I did restart this. Uh, you make sure you when you grab him, go to the left, go through these pillars, and then do a clean throw off of the cliff. 
Okay, so once you finish this quest, if you talk to the Sphinx, she's going to go ahead and leave and you'll miss out on the golden chest behind her. So in order to get that golden chest, we do need a defeater in battle. Now, there's two ways of doing it is the proper way and then the cheese way with the arrow. Now, I didn't do the cheese way. That's not how I roll. I wanted to fight her properly. I'm going to put it in a video right here from a different guy so you can see how the cheese way is done. To try this boss fight the natural way. But I'm fairly certain it typically ends with them just running away and you never defeating them. The proper way to defeat them is to use that archer build I mentioned earlier, equip your unmaking arrow, and shoot the sphinx in the wing in order to defeat it in one hit. Okay, so that was the cheese way. A lot of the online guides also say that there is no good way to fight her uh, honorably. That even if you do decide to fight her, she's just going to leave. Now, the reason for this happening is because the boss fight itself is also a riddle. Now, if you remember, when we talked to the beggar, he told us about how to defeat the sphinx. So the keys to defeating the Sphinx are in the mural and in the boss. As you can see in the boss, you can see that the body, wings, legs, and tail are in this yellow aura, while the head and chest are in a black aura, meaning those are no hit spots. The mural depicts a warrior fighting the Sphinx. That is your clue that you need to fight it in order to get the golden chest behind her. Okay, so now let's go over some don'ts. First of all, do not bring your pawns to this fight because they cannot control where they hit, causing you to fill this quest. If you end up depleting her health, this is what happens. She just leaves the battle, not because you couldn't do enough damage, but because you messed up the riddle. Okay, so the solution to this is going to be controlled hits from yourself. So what I recommend is what I said earlier. Make sure you dismiss both of your two extra pawns and make sure you make your main pawn just a regular mage with no offensive spells or traits. Now, doing so is going to allow you to control the battle and your pawn can just heal you so you can last through the fight. Now, I did this as a warrior. I'm going to leave the footage in here. I am going to speed it up because it is a long battle, but so you can see exactly how I did it. Now, if you don't want to watch the fight, go ahead and just skip to the ending so you can see the ending sequence.
Alrighty, and that's it right there. The final blow. Now, this is what's important right here. This ending animation. This is the success animation. Where she goes into this glowing aura and dissipates just like if you had used the Forsaken Cheese Arrow. Now, because we did it this way, we still have our unmaking arrow in our inventory if we ever do need it for something else. Now go ahead, uh, pick up all this gold that she drops. Now I am getting a little bit more gold. That is because I have the money trait from the Mystic Spear Hand. Um, and then just go ahead and go to the chest and pick up your final reward, which is going to be the Eternal Wake Stone. Now this is a very important reward because it undoes a very critical mechanic in the game that can potentially ruin your save. But if you have this, it'll undo it. So it's very important for you to get and that's it for today's video. Hopefully you guys liked the video. Hopefully you learned something. Hopefully you decided to fight this Sphinx the honorable way instead of having to use the ultimate cheese arrow. Remember to smash that subscribe button. Let me know in the comment section how your journey through Dragon's Dogma is going. And I'll see you guys in the next video.